us into the supernatural, into, into the eternal, into the divine, into the unseen, into where hopes and where love, where everything good is waiting for us. And all it takes is a decision to worship. essence of worship loving him for the Lord looks at the heart it's not just the root of our lips but it is rooted in our hearts that kind of love the worship that draws the father where 
ourselves, God, moving to the next rung of the ladder of your glory. blessed hope within us will increase in measures unknown, measures that are beyond our understanding. Father, in these last days, we present ourselves to you that somehow you will find us worthy Worthy, O oh God, of your purposes. Worthy, O oh God, of what you are doing. Your work molding us, being the potter in our lives. That we are your workmanship in the Lord Jesus Christ. Move us, Lord, to the next level. Transform us, O oh God, by the renewing of our minds. Help us, Father, to journey with you, that we may not be stranded somewhere in our spiritual walk, that we will be journeying with you, God, through thick and thin, through joy and through sadness. our Lord. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. God is good. It's good to be here. It's good to see you today. You know, there were moments that I really thought hard and asked difficult questions about why I have been sick, why I have been afflicted. And it led me to a passage of scripture in the book of Romans chapter 8. That all of us have to go a trial or testing. And every trial that we go through is always unique for each one. All of us undergo tests. All of us undergo trials. We all have troubles and problems while we are still living in this life. But the good thing is, God is in control. He is sovereign. We're going to talk this morning about that all things work together for good. And this passage of scripture in Romans 8.28, we always, perhaps we have memorized it. Perhaps we have talked about it. Perhaps we have used it and even uh, used this passage of scripture to encourage others. But as I consider the scripture, there are deep tones of meaning and requisites, although we want the best out of it, but there are preconditions that all things will work for the good. So if you'll bear with me kindly, um, we'll just bow our heads. We just ask the Lord to bless this message. Father, we're not here just to get a good message. We're here to have an encounter with you. We're here, O oh God, to get a hold of you. We're here, O oh Father, to receive a touch of you and to have that increase to get that promotion, multiplication, receive a blessing from you as we bless your name. Father, may it be that when we go home today, we will overflow with such truth, eternal truth, 
that sets us free to move on in a greater level than before. This is our declaration, Father. And through Christ we pray. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. How are you today? Romans 8 and verse 28. And we know. Well, this uh, three words, and we know, gives us precedence that there is a statement or there is a passage of scripture that tells us what we know and what we should know. And probably we'll review it in as we move on in this message, what we are supposed to know. Because, and we know that all things work together for good. We have security. We have a promise. We have facts. And it's not just a wishful thinking because our scripture tells us it builds up the writer to the book of Romans build up on kingdom principles that lead us to understand that leads us to know that all things work for the good for them okay a precondition for them that love God and we know there are so many scriptures that tell us how we are to love God. It's not just being in church. It's not just doing ministry. For people can be doing ministry without loving God. People can do prayer without loving God. And we want to go deeper in what it really means to love God. Because all things work for the good for those who love Him. Of course, we have hope. Of course, we stand in faith on this passage of Scripture. But then the, it requires that we have to submit to loving Him. And that would require so much of us. Because loving God and loving the world are two different things. There is a tug of war between the carnal and the spiritual. So all things, we know that all things work together, okay, not just one, but all things, whatever, whatever is going in our life, whatever is happening in our lives, and many things are happening at the same time, in work, in the office, in school, in the family, in the neighborhood, in every relationships, everything is working at the same time. We hollow, hollow. And you know, we can always trust God in this because He's sovereign. He knows what He's doing. If we have seen a juggler who can juggle so many things at the same time, God can even do more. So, all things work together for good for them, to them that love God, to them, okay, who are the cold, to them who are the cold, according to his purpose. All of us have a purpose. And the purpose is not just to fill in the empty chairs. The purposes are of greater things than we can ever imagine. That's why in this journey, we need to find that purpose. And the Bible tells us that we are to die to our flesh, to carry our cross and follow Him. And we know that the cross is the purpose in our life. Like Jesus, His purpose was to set us free from bondage to sin, to purchase us from slavery from misery, from death. His cross was to die at Calvary. And we always talk about cross. We talk about purpose. But these things are 
unique and original from one person to the next. It is unique and original from one congregation to the other congregation. As we know that we are parts of a body and the body have different parts, composed of different parts. So this body in this particular congregation, we are different parts. And all of us have different purposes. All of us have different calling. All of us have a different talents and capacities and abilities but what the bible says that whatever giftings that we have we use it for the good of the body it's not for our own personal use but the good thing is we have been given gifts we have given talents abilities capabilities and we are supposed to synergize with the body of christ To work with the body of Christ. So, in verse 29, it tells us that God knows us. He foreknew us. Even before He has placed us in our mother's womb, nailhan na ta sa giluo. Kibaw na siya sa atong mga kapasidad. Kibaw siya sa iyang pag-engineer, pag-purma, pag-hulma, o mga katuyuan sa atong kinabuhi. O tuod ko nga dili aksidente ang atong pagka rooted in a particular congregation or church. And I believe that as we are rooted and move deeper into the things of God, the more we will be committed to where God has planted us. Because there will be revelation knowledge. Because there will be a conviction that will come with it. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate, predestination. He, we are destined, what? To be conformed to the image of his son. And that is discipleship. That is becoming like Jesus Christ. That is becoming like a son or a daughter. That is becoming to become a bride of Christ. To be just like Jesus is one condition to be to become the bride of Christ. And not everyone will become the bride of Christ, although we want to be the bride of Christ one day. To be there in the first level of heaven. But then we have to become like Jesus. So discipleship is very important. Discipleship is very relevant to become more like him. And the Bible talks about our foreign nature, our sinful nature. And the Bible also talks about the acts or the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The more of the fruit of the Holy Spirit that is seen in our life, and that is not our fruit, it is the Holy Spirit working in us. It would require the Holy Spirit infill us. And it would have to be on a a moment-to-moment basis. So we are predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. What? So we will be the firstborn among many brethren. Firstborn among many. It's not just one. It's not just Jesus. But he wants us to be multiplied through Christ, in Christ, for Christ. Moreover, whom he did predestinate. Okay, Are you... Do you believe that you are predestined to be like like Jesus? Hello? And you know, as we talk about being conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, I believe, is also speaking to us in the years of life where we are not yet conformed to Him. For we are not perfect beings. There are areas in our life that we need to submit and surrender and to allow the grace and favor of the Lord to work in us and through us. And many times we are just content where we are. Where in fact, our journey is a lifetime's journey. We can never become like him in just a matter of 10 years or 20 years. It is a lifetime, a lifetime journey. And for every step that we take, for every week, for every month, for every year that goes by, there will always be a revelation in our lives that the Lord will bring to us. And what we are to do, and what we are to submit, what we are to surrender, that we may be conformed to his image. We are not transformed overnight. 
but God's grace is always there. And it's always a decision that we have to make or take in conforming to His image. And oftentimes, the Bible tells us that we need to suffer the sufferings of the Lord Jesus Christ if we are to partake of His glory. And the Lord is glorious because He paid a price for it at Calvary. He was put to shame. He was being tortured. He was being battered. And He died on the cross. And nobody can be beyond His Master. No student can be better than the teacher. We all have to go through the things the Lord Jesus have underwent. And these things come because they are part of being conformed to the Lord our, Lord our God. And many times we don't get what we should understand why we go through suffering. Why there is misfortune that comes. Where there, why there are trials, where, why there is trouble or problems that crop up. But it's all there that we may partake of His suffering. And it is with this mindset that we understand what we go through. Well, many times we short circuit what God is doing by asking God to save us from our troubles. We know, but troubles are good. Troubles are good in the sense that we learn something. And I believe that troubles is also a way for God to prune us. For He is the gardener. And He prunes our lives that we may become more fruitful. Trials, troubles, and problems are kind of pruning in our lives. And when we are able to go through it and pass those tests, we are able to be more fruitful. But when we resist it and we continue to desire and even pursue the status quo of where we were before the trouble, before the trial, and we don't try to learn and understand why we are going through these things, why we have to undergo this trouble? Why we have to undergo uh, uh, what's happening in our lives? Why we have to go through those financial constraints? Why we have to be sick? Why we have to, be, uh, to, 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 to go through such infirmity? Why we have to go through such division or strife or trouble? There are areas in our life that we need to submit to God. That the pruning will take effect. And it's only through being connected to Him that we are able to see from His perspective. Because in the natural, our flesh wouldn't want to go through all those troubles. But we need to look at life from the, from the eyes of faith. Not just from the eyes of the pleasures of this life. So moreover, he did predestinate, whom he did predestinate, them, us, amen. He also called. There is a calling for those who have been predestined. Even if we have not yet conformed to that image of the Lord Jesus Christ, we already have a call in Him. We already have a purpose. And that's why we believe that no life is just an accident. Every life that comes into this world or is birth into this world, and even those who were not able to see a day in their life, they all have a call. Those who were aborted, those who died before being birth in this life, they had a, they all had a call. And whom he called, to them he also justified. He justifies the call. He justifies why we need to be blessed. He justifies why we need to have wisdom. He justifies why we need to be promoted. 
He justified we, why we need to have freedom in him. It is him who justifies because we have a call. We cannot pursue or, uh, how would we say this? We cannot fulfill the calling unless the Lord justifies us or equips us with the necessary things. If we need wisdom, if we need finances, if we need anointing, He justifies us. And by the way, there is no need to ask for a new anointing. For anointing we receive even before we were birthed into this life, and that is the calling. That is the call. And with the call, there's an, an anointing. You know what anointing means? It just anointing just means being set apart. When you are called, you're already set apart. And when we ask for a new anointing, we are saying, set me apart again for another purpose when we have not yet conformed, when we have not yet fulfilled the original anointing that we have in the call that he has placed in our life. And perhaps that's, why, that's one of the reasons why we don't understand what anointing is. Anointing is just related to our call in this life. And that call is not a matter of vocation. That call is not related to our career. It's not related to what we do in this life to sustain us. That call is related to God's higher purposes regarding this life, regarding this world, regarding this earth, regarding kingdom of heaven, and regarding this world. And all things work for the good. It's not for the good so that we'll just have a good time. It's not for the good so just we will have all the things that we need, that we desire, so that we will have, we'll enjoy pleasures, that we will enjoy a good time in this life. When we look at scripture, there are so many people who underwent so much trouble, but in that trouble, they were in the midst of fulfilling God's purpose in their life. Hello? So don't you worry if you go undergo so, so much trouble. When you look at those scripture, I believe they, are, they also had those good times. They also had those happy times. They also had those times when they laughed, when they, had, when they were merry. But in those scriptures, in the Bible, it more focuses on the troubles, on the trials, on the challenges. Because the joy, the happiness, the celebrations, they are just the fringe benefits. But the main focus is going through the trials that come. When you look at the book of uh, Exodus, it's more focused on the trials and the testing. I'm sure they had a good time when they had bonding times with their family. When they were there 40 years in the desert. But the Bible talks more about the trials and testings. Because we are supposed to be conformed. To be like Him. So, how many here believe you're called? Hello? So, if we are called, then we are justified. What you need is there. God will supply what you need. If you need wisdom, God will supply that wisdom. But there will be times that we really need, need to ask. Everything is there, prepared. But God wants to look at how humble we are and how we dependent we are in Him that when we move and when we are at the point of need, and in that humility, we are able to ask God for help. That's why we are told to ask for our daily bread. Food, that we may be sustained, that we may survive, that we may have the strength, that we may have deliverance, deliver us from evil. Each day, 
we need to trust in Him. And trusting Him is asking of Him. Hello? So when we go through trials, ask for wisdom. Ask for salvation. It's not just because we already have salvation, we're going to heaven one day. No, every day we have to ask for salvation from what is going on in our life. But what we are going through. You know, we've heard of people always say that we are under attack by demonic power or the kingdom of darkness is attacking us in our finances, in our health, in our relationships, in our business, in our job, or in our schooling. But every time we have those ambushes and Kairos attack, because an attack from the kingdom of darkness is not an accident. An attack from the powers of darkness is always Kairos. It is planned. It is always at the time where we are least expected, we are, have least expected them. It is time when we are spiritually weak that the Kairos attack will be upon us. The enemy does not attack us when we are spiritually strong. We are being profiled by the powers of darkness. There are demons that are listing down what we do and inter interpolating those times that we are at our lowest point in our life. And the Bible tells us in the book of Job that we cannot be attacked, we cannot be, we cannot be the powers of darkness can come against us unless they ask permission from God. So if we have trouble, trouble sa kwarta, trouble sa kaminyon, trouble, trouble sa tong relationship, trouble sa ecclesia, trouble sa mga whatever trouble or problem it may be, Satan has to ask permission. Dili sila makadali-dali o atake sa ato. And the father gives permission he says, okay, you can do that, but don't kill that person. Don't kill Job. You can steal away his money. You can kill all his children. And give him sickness and disease. But don't kill him. Because how can we enjoy the promotion if the, if the enemy will kill us? And it means that when we look really into the book of Job, all the trials that we undergo is for us to really be promoted and to become more like him. When you look at the book of Job, the Bible tells us that God told Satan there's no one like him. Job is the cream of the crop. He's the most holy one in this life. You look, go around to the earth and there's no one like Job. He's the best of the best. It's not whether we are so holy, so good, involved in many things of God that we don't go through trials, that we don't go undergo demonic attack. And the Bible tells us He will allow us to be tested beyond our capacity or tempted beyond our ability. And you know what? The more we have proven ourselves ourselves to be efficient, to be effective, and to be more than a conqueror in areas of trials and testing, the more the Lord will allow us to undergo trials and testing. Because He doesn't want us to just enjoy short-lived victories. He wants us to move on without limits to the summit, to the maximum of what we are with what we are supposed to be and what we can be in Him. So kung paminaw na ito, gidasdasan taong mga pagsulay, nagsunod-sunod ang itong mga pagsulay, don't look at yourself and pity yourself and say, kaluin na ako, eh, naninood mo takos ginoon, yung aning mga gyapon ng mitabo. But rather thank God that you are worthy, that He sees you and He trusts you 
that you can go through this trial and testing bisan pag nagsunod-sunod. Because God's intention for those trials is for us to be more conformed to Him, to His Son. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why the Bible says, Rejoice in your suffering. For this is God's will for you. What? We're called to suffer? Praise God when there is suffering. Praise God kung magkabsan tagsapi. Praise God kung naatay problema sa kami yung problema sa pamilya. Praise God kung naatay problema sa kongregasyon. Praise God kung naatay problema sa society. Because it's just temporary. But we need God's wisdom. That's why we need to ask God. I need my daily bread regarding this trouble. Lord God, deliver us or deliver me from this evil. We need to learn how to trust God. We need to learn to come to Him every time there is a trial, there is a trouble, rather than trying to do it ourselves and trying to be better what we are supposed to be. We can only be better when we have God, when God is moving and working in each one or in us and through us. So, and whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. We cannot be glorified unless we are justified. We cannot be justified unless we understand our calling. We can never pursue and be aligned with the kingdom agenda if we don't understand what our calling is. If we are just contented coming to church Sundays after Sunday, we are pursuing the call of God in our life, then we will miss half of our life. Because we'll just be floating, we'll just be groping in the darkness, just like all those Israelites who left Egypt and were just going around deserts aimlessly groping in the darkness, for they were unable to understand that the call for them was to go beyond the Jordan and enter into the Canaan land and enjoy the blessing. All things work for good for those who love Him. Those who are called according to His purpose. And not just for the good of enjoying this life. There will be many moments, of course, when we celebrate the victories. But there will also be moments when we have to go to suffering. Those who teach that a Christian life is a bed of roses, they are teaching fallacy. Because when you look at scripture, there is always suffering. But praise God, because His grace is always more than enough. Hello, His grace, which is more than enough, will always be available for those who understand the ways of God. Many people, when they go through suffering, always look for the hand of God. They always look for a way out. They always look for a, a miracle. But when we go through suffering, we have to know the ways of God. How we are to maneuver, how we are to respond, how we are to decide on the circumstances that we may be going through. In chapter 7, Romans, book of Romans, we find out the first few verses that we have been released from the law. It tells us, that we have, you know, a comparison between those who are married. That one is bound to that marriage partner while the marriage partner is still alive. But when one dies, that marriage partner is now free to get married. It's no longer bound to that vow. In the same manner, we are, we are released from the law we're not bound to the law because 
we are now married to the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus died at the cross at Calvary, we have also died with him to the law, to the sin. And that's why we have a new covenant in his blood. That's why we can expect all things will, both, will work for the good. And we know. Why? What do we know? We have been released from the bondage of the law. Yes, the law is good. But we have been released from the incapacity to fulfill the law. Without grace, we are unable to fulfill the law. But in Christ, the requirements of the law is being fulfilled. So we are no longer married to the law. The law, the passage of scripture tells us that it was because of the law that we are, that we know that there is sin. Parang no parking, kung parking ka, sala na siya. Ano man, kainagoy butang no parking. The law says, do not steal. So, kung wala na siya balaog na do not steal, kung mga wat ka, dili yung tanasala. Pero na may balaog na do not steal, so it becomes sin. So the law tells us and shows us that what our flesh, when you look at the Ten Commandments, when you look at the Bible, it tells us, what we need to do to fulfill what God wants in our life. So the law, we're no longer bound to the law. And we're no longer bound to that body of sin in our life. We are already connected to the law of the spirit and life. And we have Christ in our life. It's not because of how good we are. It's because of who Jesus is in our life. That's why and all things will work for the good because we are no longer bound to sin for those who are in Christ. We are supposed to have that life in the spirit of mind. This focus on the things of the flesh is death, carnality. But the mind that is set on the things of the spirit is life and peace. And with that understanding, when we are living our lives in Christ Jesus, we live our life in the Spirit. And that's why all things will work for the good. First, we're not bound to the law. First, we are not bound to the body of sin. Third, we are living our life in the Spirit. And we are heirs with Christ. And all things will work for the good, for we are heirs, we are co-heirs with Christ. For everything that we are to inherit in the kingdom of heaven, we are co-heirs with him, and we are bound to a future glory. We are destined to be sons of God. We are destined to be revealed as sons of God. That's why we can, that's why the Bible says, and we know. Because of these promises starting in the preceding verses. And all things were worked for the good. In areas of our wealth and finances. We may have a need. We may have so many things that we need to pay for. But we know that all things will work for the good. We may have trouble financially, but Allah, God allows it that we may understand the deeper things of how God supplies, how God is our Jehovah Jireh, of how God will reveal his provision for us in the areas of our family. Bible tells us if we do not hate our father, mother, brothers, sisters, and etc., etc., then we are not fit to be his disciples. So we are told that all things will work for the good, even if we don't put them first. We put them second, backseat to Christ, and everything should still work for the good. But when we put them first, we are not in that condition 
where all things will work for the good. It should always be how God wants it to be done. It should be the ways of God. Because if we do it our way, we will never have the truth. And the truth would be all things would, would work for the good. In health and well-being. Bible tells us he died on the cross. That his body was bruised for us. And that is the reality. By his blood and stripes we are healed. And that's the truth. And that's why we can believe that there should be no suffering in the years of sickness and disease. Yes, we undergo those trials. But there will always be redemption. We have all things will work for the good in the areas of our friends and acquaintances. It's God is the center of relationship. Two greatest commandments. Love God with all heart, mind, soul, strength. Love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Two greatest commandments. So in all these things, God is working. All things will work for the good. Can you believe it? That all things will work for the good in our lives? No matter how bleak we may see or how many di or how dark our lives may be, we will see the sunshine at the end of the tunnel. And God is sovereign. When God says something, He is in control. He's control of everything. Bible tells us that he holds everything intact. Everything. And everything is going on at the same time. He is making the world go round. He is ministering to each one of us individually, corporately. And he is in charge. As we said in the book of Job, Ang yawa mangayo pag permiso para mo atake, para mo tintal ka nato. He is in charge and He is all-knowing. He knows everything. He knows everything what we are going through. He knows what we need. He knows our fears. He is almighty. He's all-powerful and He is always present. Omniscient. He's omnipresent. He is everywhere at the same time. Whether we are here He's also at home. He's also, also in America at the same time. He's also in Europe at the same time. If there are different congregations having the worship service going on at the same time, he's also there as well as when he is here. He is in control. He is sovereign. That's why all things will work for the good. Because there is nothing impossible with God. Now the conditions is to them that love God. All things work for the good to them that love God. Hello? What does it mean? Does it mean that things will not work good for those who do not love Him? Is the opposite of what this passage of Scripture say, say true? Let's see. Matthew 22 tells us, You have to love the Lord your God with all your heart. First greatest commandment. With all your heart. The intention. The center. The core. The reason for living in this life is to love Him. To love Him more than anything in this world. To love Him with more than all the treasures in this life. More than the pleasures in this life. More than the finances. More than the money. More than the people that are, that may be in this life. With all of our heart, we are to love Him. And should there be any person, should there be anything that you love more than Him, then we are not loving Him the way we, we are supposed to be. Loving Him. We are to love Him with all of our soul. You know, with how we think. In how we feel our emotions, we are to love Him. That, that condition requires us to.
to submit every part of our thinking, every part of our emoting of loving Him. Perhaps uh, you may have loved a person or several persons in your lifetime. Perhaps you may have undergo through emotions nga dili ka mahimutang, dili ka katulog, dili magkakaon. That's also, that's also the same things that should lead us into how we love God. Dili ta mahimutang kung dili ta maka dot-dot sa ginoo. Loving Him with our emotion. Loving Him with all of our mind. Tanan na tong huna-huna. Tanan na tong mga intention. Tanan na tong mga plano should be loving Him. And that would constitute planning and doing things that would add up to loving Him. And in book of Deuteronomy, it adds one more. Not just heart, not just loving Him with our soul, but loving Him with our strength. Tananatong kusog. Physical strength, intellectual, emotional, all those strength that we can harness in our life. And yet that would be totally surrendering our lives to Him in loving Him. I believe the more, per, the more percentage of these things that are true in our life, the more the higher the percentage of our love is for Him. Oh, by the way, nobody's perfect. Nobody loves Him 100% of the time. At least we're trying to. Amen? At least we're pursuing to love Him in spite of who we are, in spite of our carnality, in spite of the things that are going on in our life. Still, we come to church. Still, we pray. Still, we read the Word. Still, we come to Bible studies. Although imperfect as we may be, but at least, as Bible says, when we draw nigh unto Him, He will also draw an eye unto us. If we can only do it 25% of our time or our capacity to draw to Him, to love Him, He will come and meet us 75%, so there will be 100% that will be a reality of that loving Him. But if we are able to do 50%, but we just do the 25%, then something is wrong there. You see, it's not our incapacity, it's not our inability to do, but rather it's our desire to do what we need to do. Kaya nabita akong illustration ba yun sa akong parents ng sa una? When I go down from the second floor, ilang room is always the top of the staircase you know, when we go down, I always hear them in the early part of the morning that they are doing their devotional to the Lord. And in their devotional, they do some praise and worship songs. Well, I do you. Kanta lang sila. Hinaw ko. Pastang yabaga. Dili pa jid magtuno. Di pa dyan magdungan ilang tuno. Magyagaw pa dyan. Ang usa taas ang note. Ang usa mubo ang note. Unsay ang lyrics. Di ba kahibat pa dyan? And we know with our intention to give the best for the Lord. If we are judgmental, we would say, Nga 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 katakanto man sila. Nga di mga may may pag di sila mo kanta. But you know what? They are giving their best to God they are unable to do their best, or rather, they are unable to go beyond what they are able to do, but they are giving their best. It's their intention that is more important. It is the thought that is more important than the actual doing. 
So, heart, soul, mind, and strength, that is the condition or the adjective, the description, and how we are to love Him. And I would like you to have this kind of cunning attitude in how you love God. It's not just during on Sundays, but every moment in our life, even while we are sleeping, we are to love Him. Even in our dreams, love Him. In our, even in our subconscious moments, love Him. Because that is loving Him with all of our heart, mind, soul, mind, and strength. And all things will work for the good for those who love Him. If you want that you will be more closer to that arriving at your destiny, at fulfilling the very core and purpose of your life, then we must excel at loving Him. As we said earlier, Worshipping Him is the best thing that can happen because it ushers us into the very core and presence of God. And we cannot worship Him without loving Him. We cannot... Singing songs without loving Him is worth nothing to Him. We can love Him, we can worship Him even if we don't even sing songs. Because it is always from the fullness of our hearts. We can come to God without saying anything. And still, God sees the heart overflowing with that love. So if you love me, this is loving him with all our mind, soul, strength, and mind. But when we love him, it would be so easy to keep his commandments. Because we love Him with all of our heart. We love Him with all our soul. We love Him with all our mind. We love Him with all our strength. You know what that means? It would mean that it would be so easy to keep His commandments. If we are struggling in keeping His commandments, and by the way, it's not just the Ten Commandments. It starts with the first two greatest commandments. Loving God and loving others for everything else in the Bible from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, all these things are connected to the two greatest commandments. If we fail in these two greatest commandments, we fail in all the rest according to Scripture. So, loving Him would be so easy to keep His commandments if we truly love Him. So, I would like you to assess your life. If there are areas in His commandments that we are struggling then we have to check again and inventory the kind of love that we have for Him. Loving Him with all of our heart? Are we loving Him with all of our soul? Are we loving Him with all of our strength, with all of our mind? That should be a reality in our life and we are to cultivate it. Loving God is something that we cultivate. And you know, we cannot love God by our own love. We love Him because He first loved us. It is a kind of love that we receive from Him that we are able to love Him in return. And the Bible tells us, who loves much? The one who is forgiven much or the one who is forgiven less? And how many of our sins have been forgiven? How grave of our sins have, have we been forgiven of? Bible says that no man is righteous for all have sinned and fallen short of his glory. We all have something to thank God for. The one who loves me will be loved by the Father. So when we love the Lord, the Father will love us. And I too will love him. Talking about the love of God. We receive that love and we love Him. Father loves us. The Lord just will love Him, will love us. And there will be revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge, whatever that may be, whatever area in our life that revelation is given, whether in prophecy, 
whether in the area of wisdom, whether in the area of warning, we have a revelation from the Lord because we are in the condition of loving him. If you want to have more revelation, we must be in the midst of that workings of that love. So keep his commandments so easy. Just love God. Amen? Hello? When we focus on loving him, we don't even have to try to keep his commandments because that would be automatic. Can you just imagine a person, you love somebody and that somebody tells you what he or she wants or does not want. We don't have even to try so much to avoid or do what the other person wants because if we love it, automatic na. We don't even have to try so much to, to remember. It's just there. Because every, everything that the person, the, everything that the person that we love, everything that the person says, it will stick to our minds and to our hearts. We cannot say, Nalimot manggud ko. Everything that the person says, those person who love, that we love, it will stick to us. Because we consider everything that the person says that they are important. Amen ba? Okay. Jesus answered him, if, we, if any, any, anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Okay. So, kung atong yung masya, sayo na kayo na to na tumanon ang iyang mga sugo. Amen ba? But if there is some problem in our loving him, then we also have problems in keeping his word. But if we love him and we keep his word, the promise is the Father will love him and we will go to him and this secret of intimacy and make our home with him. Intimacy is when the Lord brings themselves into our lives and make ourselves their home. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? It's not just the Holy Spirit. The Bible says we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's not just the Holy Spirit. The Father and the Son will come and take residence in our life. Intimacy. The pursuit of one's calling and purpose. We have a destiny. What is it? To be conformed to the image of his son. And that would lead us to become the pride of Christ. It's not just doing ministry. It's beyond ministry. It's being conformed. And a core purpose and anointing. Anointing. We are set apart. We have a purpose. We have a purpose in the Lord. What have we been set apart for? And that is what we need to pursue personally. The spiritual gifts and ability. What do we have? What spiritual gifts have we received? And they are important. According to the parable of talents, we need to inventory. We need to use and invest our spiritual giftings and our talents because we will be accountable to the Lord when we just misuse it or don't use it. We will be accountable to the Lord and when the Lord will find that we have not invested it not for ourselves, but for the kingdom and for his glory. When we have not invested the spiritual giftings and talents and those spiritual resources, he will call us to be bound and thrown into the utter darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. And that's how accountable we are. And we don't want that to happen to us. 
where there will be regrets later on. So we need really to understand and identify our giftings. But as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Wala joy nakakita, walay nakadungog, walay nakauna-una sa mga butang nagiandam sa Diyos sa katong naghigugma sa iya. Can you just imagine that? But God has revealed those things to us by Spirit. So that is where revelation knowledge comes. That is where wisdom comes. That is where we get to move on because God reveals things. There is a sense of direction. There is a sense of instruction that will come into our lives. In John 17, in the prayer of Jesus, Ingon si Cristo, isa yung pag-ampo ng ato siyang mahan. Ingon si, I have made your name known to them and will continue to make it known. Okay, yung gipila, ang amahan. No one can come to the Father except through Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. So He is making known the Father, His name, who the Father is. And He will continue to make it known. What for? So that the love you have for me may be in them. This is a secret of receiving the love of the Father by getting to know Him. And I myself may be in them. So receiving the love of Father requires that we get to know Him. Hello? Question. When you say you love the other person, can you love that person without knowing the person? Or are you just in love with the facial, external things? But we know that externals will just fade away. We get wrinkled, we grow old, our hairs grow white. But something deep within, if our love is something that we, there is a substance of the person, bisan pag magtiguwang na ang kanang pagigugma, dili jimulubad. Sakto ba? Okay. So, if you love the Father, that the Father's love may be in us, we need to get a revelation of the Father, the Christ. He is the way, the truth, and life. He is the door. Just as the Father's loved me, so I loved you. So abide in my love. Abiding in His love. Abiding in Him. Just remember. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Why did the Lord tell us about how we are to abide in His love? Why do we need to remain in His love? Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. The secret of the Lord is how He how he just remained in the Father's love. Now, remember, the promise is, in all these things, we are triumphantly victorious. All things were for the good. For those who love Him, those who call according to His purpose. So all things, we are triumphantly victorious. Amen? Not, with, not just because we have pleasure in this life, but because we enter into the very meaning and purpose that God has for us. So, due to the one who loved us, we have triumphant victory because of the one who loved us. It's not because of what we do and how we have done things. It's because of the one who loved us. That's why we have triumphant victory. Now, in verse 38. I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor anything above, nor anything below, 
nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God that is our union with the Messiah, Jesus our Christ. Our, that love of God is our connection, is our union with the Messiah, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Kanang gugma is our connection. Without that gugma, we are not connected to Him. That's why the Lord says, Abide in my love. Now, neither death, life, angels, rulers, things present, things to come, nor powers, or anything above, or anything below, or anything else in creation can separate us from the love of, the of God. Love of God. Wala joy makaseparate sa ato sa gugma sa Dios. Usara, and that is us. Kita ra ang inungdan ng anong dilita makunekted dilita mo pabdayon dilita mag magpabilin dia sa gugma sa Dios. That's why the Lord said, "Remain, abide in my love." For all things, you know, all things work for the good for all those who love Him. Abide in His love. So we will, in our journey, we will find ourselves fulfilling the very purpose and call God has in our life. Whatever it may be, from one person to the next. Hello? Okay, now, in all things, we can celebrate victories. How do we look at victories? Do we look at victories at how much money we are making? Or how happy we are? Or how many blessings we have received? Or do we count our victories in the order of becoming the person that God wants us to be? Or fulfilling God's call and purpose in our life. So there would be a difference in how we view and how we look at us. So we know that all things will work for the good. Those who love them, those who have been called to his purpose. Amen. So all things will work for the good for you. Don't worry what you were going through. Don't worry what you may be having in your life. But remember, importante, higog mauna to ang Diyos. Amen? Importante, nga atong paningwaon that we will become and conform to the image of His Son. Amen? Let us pray. Ginohin lo ay gino ang mga kinabuhi. Ang tanan ang mga tinguha, O Lord, musubay, Jod, sa mong katuyuan o kabubuton. Nga dili kami, O Lord, mabugpusan. Dili kami, O Lord, ma masalaag ni ning kinabuhi. Kung dili, gusto na mo, Lord, ng patino, Jod, ng tanan butang it will always work for the good for us. That we may love you and we will be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. This we pray, Father, who Christ our Lord. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good.